Hello everybody and welcome back. In tonight's video I wanted to go through the lab flow assignment entitled Conversion Factors and Problem Solving. Uh, just like with every other lab flow assignment, we want to start out with the PDF file, which I already have opened here. Um, the PDF file, when you open it, uh, will give you, as always, the purpose, the learning objectives, the skills, and then the equipment that you would need if you were doing this in person. Notice our learning objectives here are really focused in on um, the international system of units uh, for mass, length, time, volume, talking about fundamental and derived units, looking at metric prefixes, and significant figures. Uh, so you will want to focus in on those. We've talked a little bit about significant figures in class already, and I'd encourage you to get out the significant figures guide uh, and have that handy so you have that when you're going through this material. Um, the report itself follows a few uh, little videos here. So there is a video on chemistry math, which is great to look at. It's about 10 minutes long. And there's a video on using significant figures, which is about five minutes long. I think both of these are worth looking at as a reminder as a review. And then you have the pre-lab quiz here, um, <clears throat> and you can check your current due date right there. So I'm going to click into the report, and as with the other online lab flow assignments, we're going to choose that we're doing this virtually, and request provisional data. So in this lab, we then are provided with some data, and uh, we'll just follow through the report. The tables that you're seeing here follow along with what you see in the PDF as well. And so if I uh, skip across the procedure and background here, which you should not do, you should look at all of this. If I skip past, I'm going to see that the uh, first thing that I come to in the report section is rounding measurements. So they're showing me an initial value that may have been uh, read or calculated or whatever it might be. <clears throat> and this particular assignment is asking us to round it to three significant figures. The question in each case is, was it done correctly? And so here are those same values. Um, 243 point something, 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 round to 244. Was that correct? Uh, if you think it was correct, notice that copy the value if it was correct. So you will put in something in every one of these boxes. All right, the second one, 654900, rounded to uh, three significant figures. Notice this is a super common mistake. Uh, the student apparently said, well, I know I want to keep those first three digits and I'll round based on the fourth digit. So this nine rounds that four up to a five, so a 655. So this particular student has gone from a uh, you know 600,000 kind of a number to a 600 kind of a number. They've changed the, the value. So that is not appropriate rounding. And we would go over here and punch in a correct value for uh, what we think it should have been rounded to. And you'll do that for each one of these. Then when we go down a little bit further, we see some multiplication and division, some addition and subtraction problems. Remember that with multiplication and division, your answer should be rounded to the uh, smallest number of significant figures in any of the constituent numbers, any of the numbers you started with. So uh, when we look at this first one, I go to my handy calculator and I punch in these numbers 0.1184 times 8.00 times 0.0345. And I get this long uh, answer, right? Um, and so I put that answer over here, right? I want to round this to the correct number of significant figures. So when I look at my values, I always want to say how many significant figures am I dealing with. Uh, here I've got four significant figures in my first number, the 1, 1, 8, and 4. In my second number with the decimal place, these trailing zeros count, so I have three significant figures here, and likewise three significant figures in the last number. And so I have to round to three significant figures in my answer. The leading zeros never count, so I have three, two, and then that six I'll either keep or round up based on the next digit. Since the next digit is a seven, I'll round up the six. And so this becomes 0 0.0327, three significant figures. You'll do the same sorts of calculations for the next two. 
With addition and subtraction, the rule says that we uh, round our final answer to contain the smallest number of decimal places as our least significant number. And so again, if I go here, 13.45 plus this 0.4552, I am getting uh, four decimal places in my answer. But notice my 13 number here has only two decimal places. And so I'll round this answer to two decimal places, 13.9, and then round up to one. You'll do the same for each one of these. Then we come down and we'll talk about calculating area. So here's a case where we're using an analog device. When we use an analog device to measure something, remember that we always report our answer to one estimated digit. And so in a case like this, I would read that this ruler is marked in tenths of a milliliter, oh, sorry, of a <laughs> tenths of a centimeter. Um, and so I should report my answer to the hundredths position, one extra decimal place. So I have 3.8 something. Uh, and there's a little bit of estimation that goes on here. I'd probably report 3.88. But if you saw that as an 8.5 or an 8.7 or an 8.9, it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll put in that number, but it needs to have two decimal places because your ruler was marked to one decimal place. We estimate one extra digit. You'll do that for each one of these. And notice that this is uh, a shape, right? And so this is the long edge of the shape and the short edge of the shape. And then area. They tell me the formula here of a rectangle length times width. So you'll take the two numbers you have here and multiply them and round your answer to the appropriate significance. All right. Uh, remember multiplication, it's the uh, smallest number of significant figures in your starting numbers. Then you're provided with another student's measurements. Here, you're going to do the same thing. Answer this question, why might two students have different calculated areas? Then we go to volume which of course volume is uh, now going to be a different formula. They tell me I'm looking at a rectangular solid and so we'll look at the lab manual. What do I need to measure for a rectangular solid? Um, it's gonna be three dimensions, right? Length, width, and height. Uh, if this were something else, if it were a cylinder, if it were a cone, if it were something else, um, you know, the formula might be different. And you can look in the lab manual to check that out. And when they say lab manual, they mean the PDF file. Now we're going here, we're measuring again. So measuring one dimension, record that value again to two decimal places. Measuring the second dimension and measuring the third dimension. And then calculating volume. So using the equation from the table that's given. Uh, so what is the equation that you're going to use? I'll let you look that up, but you'll pick one of those, A, B, or C and then use that equation to calculate the volume and report it to the appropriate amount of significant figures. Then we go on and we talk about converting with metric prefixes. You should know these metric prefixes. Notice that um, centi is really the only unusual one here in that it's 100 uh, units per base unit. Um, so a centimeter, I have 100 centimeters per meter. 100 centigrams per gram, although that's not really often used. Um, all the other ones are powers of three, so 10 to the third, powers of 1,000. So we get kilo, mega, and giga getting bigger, 1,000, 1 million, 1 billion. And going smaller, we get milli, micro, and nano, 1,000th, 1 millionth, and 1 billionth. And so what conversion factor can you use to convert one unit to the other? And then you'll actually convert one unit to the other, and so on and so on. When we talk about non-metric units, um, of course, using the standard system or what's sometimes called the English system, we don't have the same easy powers of 10 kind of a thing to worry about. Um, and so you're going to be provided these <clears throat> conversion factors. But basically, given this and given the conversion factors that we have up here to convert the metric units, you can convert some particular measurement uh, to some other measurement. Notice in this case it would be a two-step conversion. I'd be converting my 24 meters 
to centimeters first based on the metric meaning of centi, and then I'd be using this conversion factor to convert that centimeters to inches. Similarly here, um, miles to kilometers, they give me a conversion from miles to kilometers, that's a one-step deal. Here, milliliters to quarts, I have liters to quarts as my conversion factor. So the missing piece is milliliters to liters. And so you can convert all of these uh, and watch your units. My biggest suggestion here is to write everything out, including units, and make sure that the units cancel as you're doing your math. Um, <clears throat> in this last part here, uh, calculating your metric height, record your height in inches. Obviously, uh, LabFlow has no idea how tall you are. So, um, you know, whatever you consider your height to be, um, put that down in inches right here. So don't do the, you know, feet and inches thing. We're just talking inches. So put your height in inches. Everything else you do after this is going to be based on what you put in in this data point. So, uh, you know, if I were doing this, I would put in something like 75, I'm six foot three, so 75 inches here. And then based on that 75 that I would put in, I'll be converting that to centimeters. I would be then converting that to meters. Importantly here at the bottom, you will have some things written down. Um, I want to see you writing it down with the units. And so, uh, as they say here, use the appropriate conversion factors, write out your work, striking through units as they cancel. I want to see that. So write that down. Um, if you're writing digitally on a tablet or something, <clears throat> that's totally appropriate. You can upload a PDF or an image file here. If you are writing on paper, that's also totally appropriate. You can scan that if you have a scanner. You can snap a photo of it with either your uh, you know, cell phone camera, tablet camera, your webcam on your computer, whatever you've got. Um, if you don't have any ability to scan something, just get in touch with me and we'll figure something out. But um, as long as I can see what you've done, uh, that's what we're looking for. You don't have to upload to both of these, uh, so just upload to the calculation uploads. And if you've got an upload in one spot, I'll give you credit for the other one as well. All right, and that's it for today. Uh, this lab is relatively straightforward. It's meant to reinforce the idea of the metric units, conversion factors, um, writing out your units and being careful with what you're doing, and of course, significant figures. So if you run into any trouble, please email me. Um, otherwise, uh, go ahead and get through this, and um, I wish you the best of luck. Take care, everybody.